there genetic mutations that affect the choices for prostate cancer treatment? Increasingly so. So this is um, an exciting era uh, uh, in terms of those kinds of approaches. We, uh, you may have heard the term precision oncology or personalized oncology. Uh, the ideas behind precision oncology is that each individual patient's tumor is analyzed in detail for their biologic differences. And uh, for the most part, those are mutations, although it can be other. And that treatments may be available that work particularly well uh, for patients whose cancers have a particular mutation. And so today, uh, there are a couple of categories of treatments that are FDA approved and that can be used in prostate cancer treatment if the right mutations are present. And one of those uh, is a class of drugs called PARP inhibitors. And those are indicated in patients with advanced prostate cancer who've received uh, some of our most commonly used uh, routine treatments and who harbor mutations in a series of genes that are responsible for DNA repair. BRCA2 or BRCA2 is the most common of those, and, and that may be a gene that is familiar to people because it's also a significant gene in terms of conferring risk of breast and ovarian cancer. So that's the same, the same gene we've been thinking about for, for breast cancer is also important in prostate cancer. Mm. But there are other DNA repair genes as well that may sensitize a cancer to PARP inhibitors. Another area is something called microsatellite instability, which is a, a measure of uh, how uh, mutation prone a cancer is. And cancers that acquire a large number of mutations uh, are more likely to respond to immune therapies. And, and one might ask why that is, and it's an interesting question. We believe it's because as a large number of mutations accumulates, we see more and more abnormal proteins that are made from those mutated genes. And those abnormal proteins, some of them are different enough from our native proteins uh, to cause the immune system to recognize them. And, and, and when we have a, an immune system that actually recognizes our cancer as foreign, we're often able to amplify that, um, that immune signal and turn it into a potent anti-cancer weapon. So those are the two categories of mutations that we use in the clinic today, DNA repair and this microsatellite instability, but others are coming as we develop more targeted specific agents designed for um, people with specific cancers who have specific mutations. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bear, why should prostate cancer patients ask their doctor about genetic testing? Well, there, there, there are a couple main reasons about for that. One is, uh, of course, uh, to examine their cancer and determine if they're eligible for one of these targeted therapies. Uh, if we find those mutations, uh, those patients have an extra treatment available to them. They can still be treated with all the hormonal therapies, chemotherapy, radiation-based treatments. But in addition to those, they have... Um, an additional targeted option. And so that's a, that's a real advantage uh, for those patients who harbor those mutations. So that's really reason number one. Reason number two is to potentially protect their families. So if, if a germline mutation is identified, that mutation can be passed on uh, to kids. Uh, it may also be uh, in other family members, brothers and sisters, and, and potentially be passed on to their kids. Important to understand that these mutations, as I alluded to earlier, are not just prostate cancer mutations. They can be passed through the mother. They can uh, uh, predispose folks to breast cancer. So a germline mutation may be something the family uh, would benefit from knowing about. It's a complicated area. Learning about an inherited cancer mutation in the family can be very stressful and frightening. So I wouldn't uh, say this lightly. I think it needs to be done within the context of genetic counseling and good advice about how to communicate things like that and what to do with them. We want to be able to help people reduce their risk of cancer 
without taking an emotional toll on multiple members of the family. So uh, it's important and it's also important to do it thoughtfully and carefully. Mm -hmm.